Snipe. Severus Snipe. Dumbledore. Snipe. Ron. Snipe. Ron. Severus Ron. Snipe. Dumbledore. Snipe. Ron. Snipe. Ron. Severus Ron. Snipe. Dumbledore. Snipe. Ron. Snipe. Severus Snipe. Snipe. Hey, howdy, hi, people of the internet. Wolfman four seven dash here. There will no, there will be no foolish usage usage of the dislike button and silly comments in this video. And I should probably address why I'm not wearing a shirt. Um, I've been out in London today with a friend and it was quite mild today and I was wearing a lot of layers, so I'm cooling off. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, that was my attempt at Professor Snape, who I'm going to be talking about today. Um, in contrast to Professor Umbridge, which I did a character study of um, quite a few months ago, um, Snape is much more loved and a very much more complex character and more interesting and yeah people love him more over over Umbridge any day in fact pretty much any character even Voldemort himself is more loved than Umbridge for good reason so let's talk let's talk about Snape so in the films he's played by the late Adam Rickman a fantastic actor in his own right who's done all sorts of great roles but most people will definitely remember him more for being Snape and being one of the few actors that worked on Harry Potter who actually knew what was going to happen to his character long before the filmmakers and anybody that read the books knew what would happen. So um, I guess I should say how I feel about where he stands. So as we all know he comes across as if he might be a villain, he might be a very loyal follower to Voldemort and all this other stuff. But then at the same time, people feel a bit conflicted because in Philosopher's Stone, it was revealed that, or Source of Stone if you're in the States, it was revealed that he was not the one that um, was trying to find the Philosopher's Stone for Voldemort to use and yada, yada, yada. It was actually Professor Quill. Um, what he did do in Philosopher's Stone is, is even though he can he came across as someone that Harry immediately doesn't particularly get on with very well, he actually tried to save him through the um, Slytherin, um, through the Slytherin Quidditch match. Um, so he, so yeah, he he used a counter curse to sort of counteract the thing that no, he tried to use a, a sort of spell thing to try and counteract what Quirrell was doing. Um, so that's what he did there to help Harry. Then in Chamber of Secrets, he. In, in Chamber of Secrets, he is in it a bit, but he's not in it too much. In fact, the most significant scene he's in for that film is when they do duel, the dueling club, in which he reveals he's actually a lot more powerful than, than um, Lockhart. One, two, three, X. But then again, everybody knows Lockhart is a bit of a fraud, but if I ever do a cat study of him, we'll go more in depth with him on that. But um, going back to Snape, um, he actually willingly decides to help Harry get rid of the snake until, and that is before he is revealed that Harry can speak parcel tongue and therefore could have worked out well as a a Slytherin, but hey yo. And that's kind of like the only significant part he has in that in that story as far as I can remember. And it's been a while since I've seen since I read the books, but I have seen the films quite recently because I often uh repeated on terrestrial TV here in the UK, um, on a channel called ITV. In Prisoner of Azkaban, the most he does in that one is he teaches one class of Defence Against Dark Arts, wishing Harry good luck in a very rainy Quidditch match. Um, and then and then also doing his teacher duties of protecting Harry, Ron and Hermione from what was eventually, turns out to be, um, Sirius Black, um, who was not a traitor to, uh, the, to the Order of the Phoenix. He was actually, he was actually framed for everything that happened in the First Wizarding War. So that's that. Um, but Snape just kind of, he 
does kind of feel like he should be against Sirius, but does kind of accept it in the end. So there's that. In in the Goblet of Fire, he is probably the first that's suspicious of Moody, and is also the one that does ultimately have Dumbledore agree to allow everybody that's picked by the Tribes Cup, including Harry, to um, do the Tribes Tournament, because the rules are absolute, and yeah, 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 yada, 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 you know, from there. What the devil with Barty and his rules? And since when did you accommodate the Ministry? And Master, I too find it difficult to believe this mere coincidence. However, if we are to truly discover the meaning of these events, perhaps we should, for the time being, let them unfold. What? Do nothing? Offer him up as bait? I mean, Potter is a boy, not a piece of meat. I agree with Severus. And he also advises, advises Harry against using Polyjuice Potion because he's one of the few people, few people that Snape knows that who you, has used Polyjuice Potion before. Really? Not something found in your everyday garden. Nor is this. Know what it is? Bubble juice, sir. Veritaserum. Three drops of this, and you know who himself would spill his darkest secrets. The use of it on a student is regrettably forbidden. However, should you ever steal from my personal stores again, my hand might just slip over your morning pumpkin juice. I haven't stolen anything. Don't lie to me. Gillyweed may be innocuous, but boom slang skin, lace swing flies. You and your little friends are brewing polyjuice potion, and believe me, I'm going to find out why. <laughs> Uh, for those who don't know or forgot, Polyjuice Potion is the potion that lets you turn into a into somebody else. Whether it's a cat, um, another student, whatever, it allows you to turn to someone else and it does require a lot of very complex uh, ingredients and does take a while to brew. Unless you're using in-game time, in the video games or something else. Anyway, um, so he advises against how you to use that, to use any more of that. In Order of the Phoenix, he probably does the most help with Harry in that he tries to teach him how to not let anybody try and control his mind, in which Snape enters Harry's mind to look at his memories because he knows full well that Voldemort will attempt to do that as well at some point, which he does eventually do at the end of Order of the Phoenix in the final clash. Um, so he does that, but in turn, how he, is, how he is able to enter Snape's own memories and finds out that that, as it turns out, um, his father, James Potter, was actually a bit of a bully to Snape. Um, and, well, we know how, what happened there. Um, it's probably in Half-Blood Prince where Snape actually doesn't really do anything for Harry other than give him, other than reveal himself discreetly as the Half-Blood Prince by giving him the um, potions book that has his notes in there. Um, and then, as we all know, he kills Dumbledore. But that's not really explained why until like the next book or or film, whatever. Um, and yeah, he's basically found out to be a traitor to the Order. But he does. But in order of things, he does help the Order realize help. He does discreetly let warns the Order of what's going on in the Ministry of Magic for Harry. Um, which Harry discreetly said to him when he was being tortured by Umbridge. But anyway. Going back to um, where we are, so half blood Prince, he's found out to be a traitor, or or so we think. And then in Deathly Hallows, it's finally revealed that um, even though he was given a high-ranking uh, thing of power um, by being the new headmaster of Hogwarts, it actually reveals that um, Snape was all this time helping Harry, and he and was the one that sort of gave Harry the f the f last amount of memory he need. He needs to know how to defeat Voldemort, which is finally at long last revealing why, why all this time, why does Harry have this connection to Voldemort? Why does he always get so weak or or um, stressed or anything when he's near Voldemort? And even though he does die in the end, and 
he does eventually be able to give that information and in turn he also his memories also reveal where his allegiances lie which is he was ultimately good all along he just happened to be very conflicted after what Voldemort did to Lily and James Potter Lily especially which um, Snape had feelings for um and it's probably at this and it's at that point where he's revealed as a double agent like he's actually working for the for the good guys the order of the phoenix but um still maintaining the role as a, as a follower of Voldemort in secret in secret but only to give information to the order of the phoenix and that's pretty much snape in a nutshell in like other stuff he does he in the Hogwarts mystery game, um, which I haven't played in such a long time, if I've kind of stopped playing that because of the whole um, thing with um, in-game currency and so forth, which got a bit out of hand, um, he's kind of like his kind his self from um, from the start of the Harry Potter books. Um, so not really much to it. He's sort of a he's dislikes stuff, but at the same time he's okay with stuff and yeah, 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 yeah done all that. Um, so yeah, Alan Rickman, I think, plays an, an amazing Snape. He, it's going to be interesting to see who could possibly top him in the upcoming TV series, which is apparently supposed to be more faithful to the books. Um, but overall, I think Snape is one of the best Harry Potter characters that um, the franchise has. Very, he's a very complex character. He's one that you think he's what he you think he's evil, but he's actually not evil, and. And that, and he's just a character that um, all this time we all, always thought that he was a villain, but he actually turns out that he was helping the good guys all along. And um, one of the great things about some um, characters that become that are bad at to begin with, but become good, is the things they do to try and make sure that they don't that they the things they do, the sacrifices they make to um, help the heroes. Um, whether it's discreetly or actually full on explaining it and everything. So yeah, that is pretty much Severus Snape in a nutshell. Um, I think he's one of the best characters that's in the Harry Potter franchise. And um, I don't know who's going to play him in the, in the TV series. I hope it's someone good, but there's no one that can really top Alan Rickman. And yeah, that's all I'm going to say on Snape. Um, yeah. Do, do check out his scenes and do share your thoughts in the comments below what you think about Professor Snape as well. I'd love to hear what you think. Um, I know a lot, I know for a long time he's always wanted to be Defence Against Dark Arts teacher and he does eventually get that role. Even though Voldemort himself has put a curse on that role where every year there's a new teacher that does Defence Against Dark Arts because the teacher beforehand got a bit of bad luck. So, And I won't go into detail about that because um, you pretty much know how, how it happens is either it's either they're found out to be a criminal that they're, they're found out to be a fraud um they are they resign resign keeping the dignity intact and all that or they're just given a new role elsewhere in in hogwarts and yada 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 so yeah all right thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed the video and please like share comment and subscribe see you in the next one peace to you all and if you ever find yourselves um, learning potions, remember, the teacher will not tolerate any foolish one waving or silly incantations in the class. Um, but he will appreciate the efforts you make in making the potions or not. He might still take points off for being cheeky or whatever. Um, and remember, even though someone may look like they might be evil and be up to no good, they may actually be good all along. And you just need to like talk to them or pay close attention to their actions just to see how it all goes about. So yeah, all right, doodles. Once again, you astonish your gifts, potion gifts, mere mortals can only dream of possessing how grand it must be to be the chosen.